we can help agents cross that threshold where they walk into a conversation with confidence about what they can bring to the table and the clients can, can see that confidence, mm. these leads can see that confidence, then, uh, then we think that that is what will you know, propel the, the agents of the future to, you know, to, to great success. everybody welcome we've got a treat for you today we're going to be talking about how to focus on business post nar settlement we know it's just a proposed settlement right now by the end of july we should be seeing it go through but look it's a massive opportunity and we've got mike and bethany here with assume list to talk about those exact opportunities you guys are busy right now we're busy we where are where's where's the busyness coming from so some of it we're going to talk about that today actually is is coming from people really interested in assumable loans and we want to teach everyone here today how they can do that for themselves as well uh because we think it's a it's an opportunity that not enough people are exploiting and so if you can you can really be top of mind for a lot of buyers especially as we head into like this post nar environment where you know, uh, we're all right now trying to figure out what's life for us going to look like post NAR suit, if it's approved. And one of the things as we're doing that, that we should be thinking about is uh, how do I articulate my value? So, you know, we had to think about this before, of course, but maybe not in as detailed a way because it was almost universal that sellers would be offering compensation and that would be very obvious to us. And so buyers weren't asking as many detailed questions since the funds to pay us weren't necessarily coming out of their pocket. And, uh, and one of the valuable things that we offer as agents is the knowledge of options that can specifically help buyers save money or, or get a better deal. And whether that's, you know, understanding what programs your preferred lenders offer, like rate buy downs um, or like local first time buyer grants. When home buyers hear about potential savings, like their eyes light up, right? They're like, oh, you know, you've seen this. When you talk to a buyer about a, a break that they can get, you mention it, any kind of deal that will help them financially. And you see like that instant gratitude on their face. Um, and they get excited because they're, they're excited about the opportunity, but more importantly, they're also getting excited about you as an agent because the odds are you're probably the first one to mention that to them in a way that they could get a better deal, especially when the housing markets right now are super competitive for you to talk to them about ways they can actually save money. A lot of agents are probably talking to them about ways that they're going to like overpay for houses and a pay over praise value. So for <laughs> you talking to them about ways that they can actually save a little bit of money or keep more money in their pocket, they're, mm -hmm. they're getting excited about that. And they're getting excited about you as an individual that can help them do that. So, so creating that trust and that, that excitement is going to be really important for us as agents as we figure out how to set ourselves apart from the competition where buyers might now have to come out of pocket to pay us and they're going to start scrutinizing our value more than they did before the settlement. I would assume that when you are in front of a seller and you show them what you can do with a Zoom list on the back end, that's like so much value that they've never seen before coming from an agent because you're now giving them another option to bring in a different layer of buyers. And I don't know that you've had anybody actually bust out their laptop and be like, let me show you. Have you guys had that yet? Have you done that? We we have done it, yes. And, and we encourage other people to do that in their, both their buyers and their seller consultations, quite frankly. And Mike's going to show you some ways that you can really make that sexy. Well, with the seamless tools, we're going to, we're going to give you guys some new uh, features here with the seamless today that you can really help yourself stand out. But both on the buyer and the seller side, if you're not, if you're not taking out your computer to actually show them the data that you have access to and ideas that you've got about what could be a good fit for them, really helping them visualize what that might look like, you're you're missing out. That's a great opportunity to show them you understand what they're going through, what their needs are, and here's some options for you already that I foresee. 
Yeah. Mike, what do you have for us? Yeah. So I'm going to talk a couple things before we get into the, the demo. Um, just more data and statistics. So we haven't really seen much of a trend change recently in, in recent weeks um, where um, still the preponderance of homes that have assumable mortgages, listing agents are generally not advertising them accordingly, which is I, just continues to boggle my mind. And I know there's a lot of, let's just say negative perceptions about assumable mortgages. Sometimes still, I'd say close to half of all listing agents don't even know that the homes that they're listing having a single mortgage. Yeah. So if you're listing a home, you're going to want to find that out. Two, you're going to want to advertise it, include a comment in the in the in the description in the in the property description. Agents that advertise that, generally speaking, will get more traffic, more offers, sell at a higher price and sell for faster. I mean there's there's it's just kind of a no-brainer. Um, and the reason so let's talk about what why is that? Why would that be the case? Well, if you look at it from the standpoint of who are buyers out? What are buyers concerned right now? You know, what are buyers asking about? And and across the board, as we all know, just this past week, um, the inflation data came out, and the Fed announced that they're going to keep rates where they are, remain unchanged for the foreseeable future. And mm -hmm. so the, it's almost like we're postponing this inevitable to reduction in interest rates that were kind of anticipated later this spring and early summer. It looks mm -hmm. like that's not going to be the case, and we're going to see rates kind of stay where they are for for some time. Um, with that being said, the, um, the, the, the fact of the matter is agents need to maximize this and they need to, they need to showcase um, when they have an assumable mortgage to advertise it. Buyers want, there's, there's four types of buyers out there right now. First time home buyers, VA home buyers, FHA home buyers, and your conventional home buyers. <clears throat> Those that are advertising assumable mortgages, and anybody can buy a home with a VA assumable loan. And anybody can buy a home with an FHA assumed loan. <clears throat> there are some nuances with VA with this, with entitlement, of course. But if you want to maximize the number of potential pool buyer pool to your sale to your listing, you're going to want to talk about the fact that you have an assumable loan. You're going to maximize those people that are concerned about interest rates, which is everybody. So not paying cash, they care about interest rate. So why not do them a solid and showcase that you have this low rate assumable mortgage? Whether or not your seller intends to accept the offer, their timeline may, may or may not support it. The fact of the matter is you want to bring that attention to your, to your listing. Yeah, that's and, it. And, and the same on the buyer side. If you're representing a buyer, as Bethany highlighted, you want to bring value to that conversation. Um, and, and, and I just had a meeting this morning with a, somebody I just met today for the first time. He's a retiring, transitioning military officer. Um, mm. and, he, and he owns a couple of homes. And so when we first met today, at the office, he said, Mike, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure what agents I'm going to use. All I know is I got to, I'm retiring soon. And um, I, I did some research on assumable loans. Your name came up. Uh, so I figured I'd meet with you and talk. By the end of that conversation, I provided so much value. And I discussed about how this works and how we can use it to benefit you. And, and here are the, the pitfalls. He said, Mike, I'm I mean, he's like, he's like, I'm blown away by the amount of knowledge you have and the how I know that you can help me solve this problem for my family. He's mm -hmm. like, I'm ready to sign today. Tell me where do I sign uh, to, to have you represent me? And it was it was simple as a 20 minute conversation by bringing that value. What was what stood out for for that person that you were saying? Uh, what stood out the most for them as far as value? Yeah, so knowing the rules, knowing how it works. Like for example, this particular um, client um, has already owns uh, several of the properties. One of them, he's already has his VA entitlement occupied in that property. So he said, "Well, if I have my entitlement in that home, do I need to sell it? Do I need? To, can I just buy another home? Can I assume an existing home with my remaining entitlement?" And so we don't have enough time necessarily to go through all of those kind of nuances. But being able to have those conversations. And being able to address those concerns and walk them through the scenarios. And I literally broke it down. I said, okay, scenario one, you keep your current property, which he has entitlement tied up in a current property. I said, that doesn't mean you can't assume another home. And it doesn't mean you can't use your VA as long as you have remaining entitlement left. And so I said, there's, you know, there's ways to calculate what that would be. And we can talk through that. I said, another scenario is we sell your current home. You reinstate your VA entitlement. That frees you up to do anything you want. You can take out a new mortgage or you can assume an existing mortgage without any limitations because your entitlement has been reinstated. So we walked him through all those scenarios 
and we even talked about funding fees and, and all of the things and assumption fees that the VA charges and timelines and the new VA circular that now mandates that, so for those that aren't aware, that mandates that the lenders are must approve, if they have automated underwriting authority, they must approve a VA assumption within 45 days of receiving that application. So there are specific parameters that are now in place to help expedite these assumptions to kind of take the pain out of it that largely has kind of existed for several, you know, pretty much for the last year or two, where you hear a lot of these horror stories where it took four or five, six months yeah. to assume a loan. Mm -hmm. Like those, those stories are kind of far, few and far between. In fact, most of them um, are now occurring within 45 to 60 days. In fact, just the last week or two, I've, I've been hearing uh, uh, agents like completely beside themselves, so excited. They're talking about it on Facebook. They just closed, they closed an assumption loan in 30 days. And there's more and more examples of that where assumptions are actually taking place in 30 days. So um, the, the, the idea of using an assumption to start the conversation and generating clients out of it is a real thing. And, and my, you know, Bethany and I are, um, you know, we're building a business on this because it is the future. We think, we think yeah. solving that problem, interest, rate, interest rates are not going back to 3%. They are not going to be at 4%. Maybe we get to five and a half or six, but the fact of the matter is there's millions upon millions of homes around the country with a two and a half or 2.75 or 3% interest rate. There's nearly uh, 2.3 million properties searchable on a soon list where buyers can search for properties with a sub 5% interest rate. Again, the vast majority are sub 3% um, to help solve that problem for your buyers. Nice, man. I like that. And yeah, when you put it that way and you outline it, it all comes down to exactly what you're saying. When you're giving them information, they feel like you're covering everything. So they feel comfortable that in almost all possible situations that come up, you'll be there for them and you'll understand what's happening to guide them. That's very true. I like that. All right. So show me, show me, uh, show me the demo. I want to see what you've got here. Cause I know you're always adding to it. Always adding. So um, first and foremost, um, I'll just do a quick uh, s s screen share here. And um, what we'll do is I'm going to just do a quick update on where we are with the recent areas served. So we are just in the last week, we've launched in five new markets and in six additional MLSs. So we were in California and Florida and Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting ready to launch this week in Colorado. So Denver and the Colorado Springs market. So these, uh, I think it's 11 counties or so, uh, kind of around the, the central Colorado market. So Denver, Colorado mm -hmm. Springs, uh, which comprises for the agents out there, it's the RE, RE Colorado and Pikes Peak uh, MLSs. Um, also, we're launching in MRED in central Illinois. So uh, Chicago, uh, all the way down into northern and central Illinois, we'll be launching there this week as well. The mm -hmm. Vegas market will be launching in Vegas this week. Uh, so anybody who has clients in and around uh, what's the two big ba bases there? Cannon and Creech Air Force bases. Uh, we'll cover all of the entire Vegas and southern ha half of Nevada. And also, um, we are launching in the northeastern portion of Florida in the Jacksonville market, as well as southern Florida, kind of the, the Miami-Dade, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach area. We're launching in there um, later this week as well. And then Man. finally, uh, we, we don't have the map built out for Texas, but we will be launching in Texas within the next probably 30 to 45 days to encompass Austin, San Antonio, Houston, and um, um, what's the last? Dallas. So those four major markets we're going to be launching in the next, say, four to six weeks in, in Texas. And once that's done... With uh, with the exception of probably Georgia and North Carolina, which are the other two major markets that we're looking to expand in, we'll cover pretty close to about 90 percent of the entire assumable mortgage market nationwide uh, with with these major. Now, of course, there's little odds and ends and there's pockets here and there. But from the concentration of where does the vast majority of assumable loans reside across the nation, we'll, we'll have pretty close to about 90 percent covered within the assumeless platform. Nice. That's uh, dude. Um, you guys are going fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're we're launching really really quick. Um, 
the other thing I'll just mention just for those that are subscribers or, or will soon be subscribers. So right now uh, we, we have a feature that allows us uh, consumers to see, you know, for example, if we go to California, the total number of assumable more, uh, mar mortgages that uh, reside in uh, or available for uh, assumptions in the state. And you can flip through every single state uh, and see them. But what we don't have is kind of what is the trend been? So as the trend goes up or the trend goes down, are more assumable mm -hmm. mortgages available today than they were last month? And so we're, we're, we're building out a new feature and this is just uh, still in demo. So it's on our staging site, but we'll have this available on the production server within the next week or two, um, which is going to show a trend line. And this is for California here, a trend line, you know, every week we, we're actually seeing an increase in the number of available assumable mortgages in California. And so I thought that showing trend um, would be a really powerful way of demonstrating to buyers or even sellers, hey, there are more homes available now that with assumable mortgages than there were last week or the week prior, the month prior. And we're going to display the trend line for it specifically for assumable properties by each state. So each state will have its own trend line and show reflective numbers of where things are. And you can also see coming soon status. Not all MLSs provide coming soon, but for those that do, we will demonstrate where the coming soon properties are, um, you know, relative to active and even some, you know, if we, if we include the, the pending just to show the totality of all homes within a particular market. So it, we think that's a really cool, powerful feature awesome. as a talking point to show trend of where where assumable mortgages are now relative to, say, last week or last month or two or three months ago. I like this, man. This is uh, awesome. this is cool. Yeah, another cool feature we just released, um, and this is live right now. So if we go to say, I don't know, San Diego, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know and you wanted to say, focus in on a specific community. So right now, uh, we were, you know, as of now, we have this draw feature, so you can kind of draw a map and then you can filter properties based on that custom draw feature. So if there's a specific neighborhood or community, rather mm -hmm. than just filtering it based on city or zip code, we're having a draw feature and then we're enabling that specific map that you've customized, setting up alerts so that when you, uh, you if you wanted to have alerts either come to you whenever a new property within that area becomes available, you can do so um, through an email notification. So you save an alert, you type in, you know, what maybe this is for, you know, a client, John Doe, and then you can set up if you want instant alerts and you want to be notified of status changes, price changes, you can add in the client's email address there. And then the client will receive an email. Here's just kind of a demonstration of what it would look like. When any new properties that match that criteria in that parameter that you set, they'll receive an email notification. And when they click on that email, they'll open it up into the assume list platform showing that client the uh, loan balance, the interest rate, the down payment requirement or the cash gap. And it's custom branded to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, I'm logged in as an administrator, but behind this panel, this top cool. screen here, it says my name. It'll say my team name and logo. And then of course it's branded to me or you know, you as an agent your logo, your photo, your contact information will all be branded to you for whenever you send these out to clients. Um, they know to contact you about these properties, but of course you're the one who sent it to them for alerts. So, so they already know that they're getting them from you, but this now, if they share it further, it all gets sent back to you. That's really um, pretty cool, right? That's really cool. Just the, just the top left, that little breakdown that you had, that's, Pretty powerful. Or yeah, 30, I mean, every, down, every property on a Zoom list with an assumable mortgage will tell you the loan type. So this particular one is an FHA property, the loan balance, the interest rate, and the mortgage payments, um, as well as the purchase date. And if it was refinanced, we'll include the refinance date, the property type, subdivision, county. So all of that's listed, as well as all the other general information that you would expect to see, because we are, you know, we do have a live, a live MLS feed. So you can go through the photos, uh, you can click on the map and you can, this property is, happens to be right outside of uh, in, in uh, Northern Virginia. So you can view it uh, on a Google map, you can switch over to satellite view and you can see it on a satellite view. Um, so pretty pretty cool features that we enable uh, just to help mm -hmm. paint the picture. And, then, and of course your, your clients have access to all this information, days on market, square footage, taxes, it's all here, um, you know, but the, the core of what we offer that nobody else does, of course, is this uh, assumption component, which is the yeah. 
the, the, and then you can set up filters based on amount payment. So if, if you've got a buyer, um, say, let's just remove the shape. Let's go to a big county. Let's go to, um, let's go, what county do you live in, Tristan? Ventura County. So Ventura County, California. So if we wanted to see Ventura County, California, there are currently 45 homes for sale with an assumed mortgage in Ventura County. Um, and um, and then if we wanted to kind of do a filter, say, let's say you've got a buyer, they don't have a lot of cash. You could filter based on the down payment requirement, mm. uh, or the cash gap that you have relative to your specific client. So if you got a client, let's just say they only have 200K down. So you want to eliminate all the other properties that have a, a down payment requirement above that. You can do so. And now, now it's only filtering homes and only displaying homes. And you can see that That's awesome. the cash gap in, in this uh, specific uh, filter criteria that we set up. And it shows you not only the list price and the cash gap, but you can go into each per particular property. And of course, that's when you can see whether it's a VA, FHA, the interest rate, all that stuff is available to you. And then you can save, you can again, save this as a search mm -hmm. and then you can send this to your clients. And so any of these other properties uh, as new ones come out that match that criteria, they will be notified in real time. Or you can set it up as a weekly or daily, once a day, once a week, or instant, whenever that new property hits the MLS, your client will now be notified accordingly. Another cool feature that's coming out later this week, I don't have it for demonstration today, is you, just how I demonstrated the live MLS. Yeah. Everybody in uh, any active or any agent who has an account with a Zoom list mm -hmm. will also be able to search for every off-market property that has an assumable mortgage. So Ventura County overall has just about 9,500, almost 10,000 homes uh, in, in Ventura County, California with an assumable mortgage all under with an interest rate of below 5%. Damn. So what's really cool, I don't, it's not, I can't demonstrate it today, but by the end of the week, this will live be live is you can then also filter off market homes based on the cash gap. So, so that, how does that make sense? Cause they're not actively listed for sale. So what is their list price? where we use a market valuation to come up with what, what's kind of a, a you know, automated valuation criteria to see to you know, basically anticipate what a current list price would be. And we use that as a basis to come up with that delta, that cash gap delta. So that if you have a buyer that wants to live in a specific neighborhood in Ventura County, for example, you can find them an off-market property that also has that filtered cash gap criteria that you can now used to contact uh, homeowners. So for example, if this property here on Ambrose Avenue, um, let's just say it matched all your criteria, this home is off market. So we don't, it's not listed for sale. There's no listing agreement in place, but it matches, it's got a two and a half percent interest rate. It's got a loan balance of about 400,000. So that, that calculation will be provided to have roughly a $55,000 cash gap requirement. Down here at the bottom, under property owner details, we already know here who the owner is. I can click this button and it will, I'm not gonna do this in real time because for privacy reasons, because this will go to the world, I know this video will. This, if I click this button right here, it will provide me with the skip tracing data of the actual homeowner's email address and cell phone number that then I can use as an agent. If I've got a client who wants to live in this neighborhood, there's nothing for sale or there's no assumable homes for sale, but I just mm -hmm. found one that's off market. And I can use this uh, as a, an opportunity to per perhaps reach out to the seller and, and have that conversation with the seller to see if they're interested in selling. I've got a willing and ready buyer who wants to live in this neighborhood. We came across your home. We understand it has a two and a half percent interest rate. Sumas just provided you with the tools to call that homeowner to have that conversation. So, so now you can access, and remember all these filters and everything was all set up through a Zoom list. So we know that the cash gap in this case was 50K so that your buyer had the means to buy it. We know the interest rate, we have the homeowner information. And so all of this is now searchable from inside, inside a Zoom list. Pretty cool. Dude, it's amazing. I'm still thinking, it was after our last session that we had, I went to Trenton, he's our director of technology. And I said, why don't we cr start creating ads, Facebook and Instagram ads that start advertising the homes that are on the market already right. that are assumable, right? And we're in the process of creating that because if we can lead people to a list 
but before they get to the list, we capture their info and then reach out to them and talk to them. Um, that that's that's a whole new category of buyer leads that nobody is touching, and you allow yeah. us to be able to do that. Exactly, and for, and just as a recap, Tristan, what Tristan is talking about is any property that you as an agent find, you can create a link uh, just by clicking the share button, and it creates a custom link branded to you, the agent, um, where you can take this link right here and post that link to uh, Facebook, for example, and it creates a custom branded advertising uh, advertisement. Effectively, like you know how people share links on Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com, this is a link branded to you. And when, when that, the world will see that on Facebook in their feed. And when they open that up, they it will look like, um, it will look just like this property here. It will be um, a property that has your information to you, your contact information. And then if they, remember, these are people outside your network. So mm -hmm. they'll, if they see this property and want more information about it, this information is already pre-populated. If they're a Google account holder and they're logged into their Gmail or Google account, mm -hmm. their contact information is already populated and the address is already populated. All they have to do is hit the submit button. That will be sent directly back to that agent who posted that ad. And this is a free lead that that agent just received without paying any money by just promoting either their own listing or some other listing that they found that say it's in a neighborhood that they like to work, they can promote any property and generate leads off of it. Dude, this is, this is amazing. I love the ability you give us to just offer more value to the people that we're working with. And, and I think as the sellers and the buyers see this, because it's, you can't find this anywhere else, right? This is such a big uh, layer of value that you give. Um, it just creates a big opportunity for us to stand out. It does. And, and Bethany opened it up earlier and she was spot on is, is that those agents that can bring value to the table will be able to generate more business in this post-NAR lawsuit world that um, we, we're not worried about that. You know, there's a lot of agents who I know are, you know, they're, you know, high blood pressure and they're a little stressed out and what's <laughs> feet. And and I mean you see it in, in the in the lab code agents Facebook yeah. group and I and I see it as well. There's there's no shortage of comments of people who have expressed their their thoughts and frustrations with what to expect. Yeah. And really what it comes down to is the agents that can create value and sh and demonstrate that that they are worth working with. Um so the the the, the example that I gave that earlier today I met with this new client the end of that conversation, he said, Mike, I want to work with you and only you send me the buyer representation agreement. I'm ready to sign it now. And I didn't, and I didn't even offer to send him any buyer representation agreement. It wasn't like, Hey, uh, can I send this to you? It's he, he asked, um, cause he saw value in working, working with me. And, and I think that's where we want to help agents get to. If we can help agents cross that threshold where they walk into a conversation with confidence about what they can bring to the table and the clients can, can see that confidence. Mm. These leads can see that confidence. Then, uh, then we think that that is what will, you know, propel the, the agents of the future to, you know, to, to great success. I agree. I agree. All right, everyone listening in, what city and state are you in? Because a sum list is not everywhere yet. Uh, it's in concentrated areas. So I just want to see where everybody's in. Obviously I'm in Ventura County. Um, there's a, there's a military base there. So that's why you saw so many, uh, so many properties that were available there. Let's see what we've got here. We've got San Antonio, Texas. Uh, obviously Jake is in Ventura County too. We work together, uh, Temecula, Houston, Texas, New Jersey, uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, Keith, San Antonio, uh, Kenyatta, Norfolk, Virginia, Sharon Oceanside, California, San Diego area. Yep. Uh, Stephen Birmingham, Alabama. Tony Houston. We've got a few people from Texas. I like that. Yeah, man, uh, we'll cover that soon. Lacey Palmer, Alaska. Lacey, I don't know where Palmer is. Now I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, Adorada, Houston, Hampton Roads, Virginia, Northern Utah. 
by Hill AFB. I don't know where that is, but now I have to look that up too. Frisco, Texas. Do you know where that is, Brad? Welcome. Wart. Is it Wart or Warty? Maple Grove. Oh, it's Warty. There you go. Warty. Yep. St. Louis and Derek out of Long Beach. Uh, you're covered. Uh, guys, what areas are next that you're working on after Texas? Texas comes out. The areas in Texas come out next week, you said? Yeah, no, Texas is, I'm just starting Texas. So we're probably four weeks from getting Texas launched. Okay. Um, and like, I think we already discussed, uh, so Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, which I think covered all the ones that were mentioned in the chat. Yeah, all the big ones. Um, all the big, all the bigger cities, right? Um, and beyond that will be North Carolina, probably the Charlotte area, as well as Eastern North Carolina. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, and surrounding counties around the Atlanta area. Um, and then really it's, I'm going to lean on the community to tell me where they want us to go. I mean, we, we can go really wherever we find the demand for where the demand signal exists. So um, of the list that we just saw, I think we cover about 80, eight out of 10 of those cities we're already in, or we'll soon nice. be in this week. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the remaining ones, you know, we just have to find ways to 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 get into them in the, in, the, in the weeks ahead. I mean, the fact of the matter is interest rates aren't going down. So, um, you know, you can have a conversation for the agents out there that we don't necessarily serve yet. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm always happy to help agents, especially lab code agents like this is a this is a team. This is a group that we are here to help each other. Um but yeah, reach out to me. We're happy to help you answer questions or or, or dispel rumors about how assumable mortgages work. Yeah. We are growing as fast as we can. I think, you know, remember when we did our first webinar, Tristan, a couple of months ago. We were in a couple of states and now we're, you know, we're well into what, 12, 13, 14 states. Yeah, that was fast. That's why I'm yeah. like, wow, man. Not even two months, right. So I think we're uh we're 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 growing as fast as we can and um and we're 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 not done yet. Alabama. Steven's asking for Alabama. How is that? Uh, I've looked. I've looked at Alabama. Um, I've got to do some more research. Uh, and it, just behind, you know, letting people poke peer behind the curtain here. How it works is we, act, we get access to a market based on the MLS coverage area. Because remember, mm -hmm. all the properties that we want to uh, make available for search, we have to have an, a live MLS um, connection. So that. So we have to do all the broker compliance and there's legal rules and, you know, the MLSs have to approve the assumeless website onto the platform, et cetera. So there's a lot of work kind of happens behind the scenes. And so what we really look for is those MLSs that have a large, you know, juices worth the squeeze, so great broad coverage area, a lot of assumable mm -hmm. homes. And so some of these smaller communities, a lot of, a lot of regions around the country, and Tristan, you may know this, their MLSs are kind of broken up into little, you know, pockets, you know, county here, a yeah. county there, and a county here. And it just makes it more challenging. It doesn't make it impossible, just more challenging because we have to meet each individual MLS compliance rules. They have to do the review and, and we have to you know, subscribe and get broker's approval. And so there's a lot involved with making all that happen. Um, so it doesn't mean that we're not going there. It just means that it's going to take some time to get some of these other smaller, smaller areas. We have looked at Alabama and I, I, we are, I don't have a timeline yet, but we will most likely consider that um, in, the, in the months ahead. Thanks. All right, everyone, we did put up the link. It, let me bring it up. Jake, if you can drop in the link one more time. If we don't have your area, there's a place to click a link and say, hey, I, I'm on a wait list as well. So do that. And if you sign up, let us know. We'd love to know how you're doing, how you're using it, and what the consumer that you're targeting is talking to you about as well, because this is an extremely value-driven software. So uh, Last plug sure. is... Uh, Jake just posted the link. So that's the lab coat agents exclusive discount. Um, if, for those that sign in, we do have a um, form that can be submitted. There's a feature that you want or a capability that would help you in your business. Submit that feature request to us. We have rapid development underway. We can implement changes in a matter of days, not weeks or months. Uh, so we encourage you if, if there's something that would be helpful to you in your business, um, first off, you get a discount for being a lab code agent member. And two, we would, we would encourage any feedback to help us mm. improve the platform for the broader community. Perfect. Let me put in the wait list too. I'm just going to drop in the link just in case anybody wants the wait list. There it is. Yes. 
There's a wait list, everyone. Grab that one. Bethany, Mike, thank you so much. What area are you guys in so everyone knows? North Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, close to DC, about 15 minutes outside. Oh, so the would you say the DMV area? You guys yep. covered that? All right, perfect. Everyone else, thank you. Take advantage of this. Click on the wait list if your area is not there. And then if it is, sign up, use it. And as we start coming up with ads on Facebook and Instagram, I'll showcase those too so we can show you what we're doing and how we're succeeding. Yes. So, exciting. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too. Bye.